Poco a Chromebooks made for in 2023? How much has Chrome OS changed and is it comfortable to use? Let's take a look on the example of Asus Chromebook Flip C433. This mid-range Chromebook is made in 2021, original price was around $300 and I bought it used for $200. It's a touchscreen convertible powered by an Intel Core M3 processor with a decent 14 Full HD screen, 8GB of RAM, 64GB of storage and a long-lasting battery. Well, this configuration is enough for a dozen not-so-resource-intensive websites and a couple of Android apps. Yes, this is uh, far from modern and expensive Chromebook Plus models, because the build quality is quite low. Nevertheless, it's no longer the 2015-like e waste that you can probably still find for around $100. As in many Chromebooks, there's a volume rocker, though the sound controls are already there on the keyboard, and a lock button. Here we have impractical and rare USB Type-C connector and also the normal USB. There's also an SD card slot. In many ways, the device feels like an Android tablet, with was the only difference being that it makes sense. Although this laptop is very difficult to open, you need to find a notch and put a lot of effort. At least its case is metal. On the downside, the worst trackpad I've ever used in my life. It's flimsy, clickiness, obnoxious and inaccurate. On the positive side, keyboard is ok, there's some kind of backlight on it, but most importantly you have over 8 hours of battery, which usually is only achievable by MacBooks. Moreover, the sound here is surprisingly good. Here's how the 50% volume sound compares to the 2000 MacBook Pro M1. Про і М3 Max і декілька нових продуктів на них. Як не дивно, це була не коротша презентація Apple, проведена в не самий зрозумілий М3 Max і декілька нових продуктів на них. Як не дивно, це була не коротша презентація Apple, проведена в не самий зрозумілий для нас час, але ну це типу передніччю геловін у них, а у нас от прям самий розгар того, як ми спали. Але вони нічого не показали, наприклад, про ігри. Мені здавалось, що на фоні того, що Apple зробила з iPhone 15 Pro і Pro Max, де на However, like most Chromebooks, this model will likely be hard to find parts for, repairability is dubious to say the least, as always customer service in your country may vary. Yes, 8 hours of battery life is an unattainable level for most Windows laptops, but can you really use this budget Chromebook? For starters, you can still do everything without internet connection. Many people think that Chromebooks only can work online, but that's simply not true. You can download files offline and use non-web programs like Android apps or Linux software. You can even install a different browser and use something other than Chrome on a Chromebook. Let's list everything that can be installed on a Chromebook. Programs that I have on this ASUS thanks to Linux support include GNOME files, Firefox, Microsoft Office 2007 using Vine and Transmission. You can find lots of videos on how to install Linux programs on YouTube, so in this video I just want to show how everything works. You can also install Android apps like on an Android tablet. Three years ago I already did a brief review on Chrome OS and back then you could install an Android version of Microsoft Office from the Google Play Store. Unfortunately, three years later Microsoft Office is no longer available in the Play Store, but you can still download third-party APK files. Some manipulations are needed, but the process is not complicated, taking a few minutes.
Unfortunately, most Chrome OS laptops don't support virtual machines such as Parallels Desktop because you need to have powerful hardware to do this. Plus, Parallels Desktop is only available to corporate users on a subscription basis, so no easy way to get Windows apps on Chromebook. This is why if you're using a Chromebook, you'll have to use web apps, Linux programs or Android apps, which is really enough for most people. You can even edit photos and videos thanks to Pixlr and uh, LumaFusion if you need to. And while it will never replace full-fledged software like Photoshop and Final Cut, I doubt that most users who are usually consumers, not creators, will need any of it. However, Linux programs like Jimp, a Linux version of Photoshop, will come to the rescue when needed. Now, important points when it comes to the software. Linux applications do not support keyboard language switching and language is set to English by default, with no easy way to change that. In Firefox, for example, you can download more languages for UI, but for many programs it is much worse and can only be fixed with great knowledge of Linux. Second important thing, unfortunately Linux on Chrome OS runs in a virtual machine, which affects performance and fonts, so everything will look blurry. On the other hand, you can easily uninstall a Linux program or install the entire Linux environment if something goes wrong. Also, if you want to install Microsoft Office via Vine, make sure to install the 2007 version and be aware that most keyboard shortcuts won't work. The best part of it is that you don't actually need Microsoft Office and Linux on your Chromebook. You have plenty other options such as Microsoft Office Online, which works just fine in a form of progressive web apps. Of course, you can also use old version of an Android Microsoft Office app or, you know, use Google Docs. You also have basic editor for compatibility with Microsoft Office files if you don't use anything from this list at all and you urgently need to open a Microsoft Office file. Speaking of Chrome OS resource efficiency, browsing and web apps performance, it is acceptable. Let's just say this performance is justified by the $200 price tag. However, don't expect Chromebook to perform like a $1000 MacBook, while the OS is made very power efficient and generally runs faster than Windows on a cheap laptop. The graphics subsystem isn't as advanced as on Windows and macOS, which causes lags and uh, minor annoyances, including even mouse cursor lagging. Android games on this particular ASUS are not playable at all, even at the lowest quality settings. At the same time, modern Chromebook Plus models that offer Intel Core i5 processors or something similar will likely give you a better user experience, especially if you want to use Linux programs or play any games at all. Now let's talk about what's changed in Chrome OS since the last time I briefly used a Chromebook three years ago. Chromebook's usability has improved a lot in three years. Chrome OS works seamlessly with modern Android phones, syncing notifications, you can sign and even scan documents, make notes, view and edit images, etc. Google added screen recording, now it's also possible to take screenshots and even record a screencast. Window management and tablet mode had definitely improved. Gesture control is now complete. Three fingers left or right to switch tabs on Chrome, three fingers gesture to switch windows, four fingers to switch virtual desktops. The biggest change is a possibility to log into multiple accounts in Chrome browser. This feature is a preview for now, but will be available to everyone later this year. This is really a big change, as previously Chrome OS was a last place where you couldn't use multiple Google accounts at the same time, as you had to add separate user accounts on your computer to do so. But there's more. Now you can press spacebar to have file previews like on Macs. Here it is, clipboard history like on Windows. 
Notifications from Android smartphone are conveniently hidden when doing a screencast, by the way. Google also added flash drives formatting in Chrome OS and other little things. Now to what hasn't changed in 3 years. The cursor in the system is still laggy, this is especially noticeable when using a non-standard color and size. Still there are a lot of new settings for cursor, while the too fast scrolling can be fixed with a flag in system settings. There is still no way to change screen sleep off timeout. At the same time you can still easily connect accessories like a flash drive or mouse, and you can still work offline without a constant internet connection. A separate topic is how to choose a decent Chromebook. First, you'll need to check how long Google will release updates for a particular model. Although the Chrome browser and operating system are now separate, which in theory will increase the support period from Google, you'd still want to receive updates longer. For new Chromebooks, Google promise is 10 years of updates. You can check how many years are left for your chosen model from the link in the description. It's also important for a Chromebook to support Android apps, because without it functionality will probably be lackluster. All models after 2019 support Android apps, you can check an older model in the list from the link in the description. You can also check if there is support of Linux apps, link is in the description. Now, let's talk hardware. Convertible design and touchscreen are optional, but will be great to have and make your device ready for everything. Keep in mind that touchscreen on a Chromebook is much more useful than on a Windows laptop. I also don't recommend buying a screen with a TN matrix, as in 2023 it's really an uh, e-waste. Nowadays Chromebooks with IPS screens can be found for less than $200. Also, you need at least 4GB of RAM to run a browser in 2023. Do not neglect this, otherwise in a few years you won't be able to even open a Facebook, which today can eat more than 2GB. Of course, models with SSD memory are extremely expensive, much more expensive than Windows counterparts, which is quite strange. Most likely, your Chromebook will be equipped with eMMC memory. You need at a bare minimum 64GB of eMMC memory to be able to install at least some Android apps, but also don't forget that eMMC equals your SD card, so it greatly affects speed of any computer. Of course, if you buy your laptop for emails, working in Google Docs and stuff, eMMC will be enough. Also think about paying for Google Drive, which, depending on country, costs not too much at all. What about the most important hardware aspect, which is processor and graphics card? It depends on your needs, but I'm sure that most users will be satisfied with a low-power processor that also often consumes less energy, like Intel Core M3 in this ASUS. But if you want a more premium experience or wish to play games occasionally, consider buying a Chromebook Plus model with moderately balanced hardware, good build quality, decent webcam and a price starting at $400. Otherwise, if $400 is a problem, don't focus on a processor. Ok, back to the ASUS Chromebook Flip C443. Considering the $200 price tag, I'll give it 7 out of 10, which isn't bad given that I'm used to expensive Apple computers. So, let's answer the main question, who can use a Chromebook? This particular ASUS was bought by me for my grandmother as she doesn't have a tablet but wants to watch TV series somewhere. However, the second important factor of choosing Chromebook in particular is that we were preparing for massive power outages due to the constant shelling of Ukraine's civilian infrastructure by the terrorist Russian army. And while there may not be a war in your country yet, battery life is becoming increasingly important to many people. Don't forget price of the cheapest models. For many used models it starts at just $100. This ASUS for $200 for example came with just several battery cycles in nearly perfect condition. Chromebooks are devices with protection for the user and from the user. On the one hand, they are extremely easy to set up and fairly safe devices in terms of vulnerabilities and viruses. Chrome OS can be set up very quickly for new user. There's also a fantastically quick power watch function here, which is factory reset. On a separate note, there are good scale settings, which can be important for people with poor eyesight. You won't find anything like that on Windows. My grandmother also likes installing all sorts of shady software, scareware, numerous optimizers, cleaners and other nonsense. On Chrome OS it's very easy to control it all, the device is easy to reset and it's very hard to break anything critically. It's basically a sandbox for kids, some kind of protected environment for those who don't know much about computers. Well, for other users it's a great replacement for Android tablets, which never became a thing. 
touching input and screen rotation work much better on Chromebooks than on any Windows notebooks or tablets. So what do we have in total? Excellent better life, easy setup, extensive functionality thanks to web, Android and Linux software and not bad security. Oh and did I mention the price? The overall score I give Chromebooks and Chrome OS in 2023 is 8 out of 10. Could be better, but they serve the function well. Thanks for watching, be sure to like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if I should make more videos about Chromebooks and Chrome OS.